Hello friends, this video on body fluids and circulation part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction Blood Lymph or tissue fluid Circulatory pathways Double circulation Regulation of cardiac activity and disorders of circulatory system. So what are we going to talk about in body fluids and circulation? Now we all have a basic knowledge of the human circulatory system. So we all know what the circulatory system does. It basically circulates the different substances throughout our body. Now whenever we talk about the circulatory system, the first thing that comes to our mind is blood. So blood is a fluid which flows throughout our body and that means it helps to transport substances from one part of the body to another. So now in this lesson we are going to talk about body fluids, the fluids which are present inside our body and of course one of them is blood. But even other than blood also we have other body fluids present inside. So we are going to talk about blood as well as lymph. So lymph is another body fluid which is present. When I say, when I talk about circulation, I am basically talking about the internal transport in animals. So animals means all animals, not only human beings. So each and every organism which is living needs all the minerals and nutrients and water and whatever is required for their survival to be transported to each and every part of their body. And for that transportation, you need a means to carry the substances from one part to another. So that internal transport is facilitated by circulatory system. So here we will talk about the circulatory system. And the question is what in the circulatory system or who in the circulatory system actually helps to transport. So if you ask that means it, it would be the body fluids. Now the question is what do they transport? So what do we mean by internal transport? So it is nothing but transport of oxygen, water, food, hormones, etc. to different parts of the body. So if you look at it, all of these are like essentials for the survival of life. You need oxygen to survive, you need water to survive, you need food to survive. So all the things which are required for an organism to survive, they should reach different body parts because each and every cell of our body need them. So internal transport is transport of all those important substances. They may be fluid like water, they may be gases like oxygen or they may be food. Now the question is who transports throughout the body? How the transport takes place? And what can happen or what are the disorders that might take place in the body of a living organism if proper transportation does not take place? Now the answer to the first question that is who transports throughout the body is going to be the body fluids as I said there are some fluids which are flowing throughout our body and when they flow from one part to another they carry with themselves all the required substances. So the best example would be blood but it is not only the it is not the only fluid present in our body, even lymph is another fluid which is present in our body and this also helps in transporting substances from one part to another. Now the next question is how the transport takes place. Now how blood actually carries the substances from one part to another or how lymph carries them. So that is what we will talk about in the circulatory system that who regulates the transport of substances, who tells blood what to carry in which direction and when to carry them. For example, if you talk about uh, the fresh blood which is present in our body. Now inside our body, both fresh blood as well as full blood are present. So fresh blood is something which is rich in oxygen and all the nutrients and foul blood is something which is rich in carbon dioxide which is to be uh, thrown out of the body as well as other waste materials. Now. How is the process of transportation governed that the good blood should reach different tissues of the body and the bad blood should be thrown out of the body? So how that governance take place? So that is what we will see when we talk about the circulatory system in detail that how exactly these body fluids carry substances from one part to another. 
And the last one is the circulatory disorders. Now, as I said, circulation is extremely important because if proper circulation does not take place, uh, there will be many parts of your body which will remain deficient in a lot of things. Maybe some part of your body might be deficient in water. Now, if sufficient water is not made available, then some of the cells might dehydrate. So that will have adverse effects on the entire individual as a whole. So those are known as circulatory disorders. That means any problem with the functioning of the circulatory system, whether it is a problem with the body fluid or it is with any other part of the circulatory system, which is not functioning properly, that can lead to circulatory disorders. So we will also discuss about some of the common circulatory problems or circulatory disorders and their cause and symptoms. So that is our basic agenda in this lesson. So let us start our discussion with the first body fluid and the most important body fluid that is blood. Now I have already given a brief introduction on blood uh, in our junior classes in class 9 to 12. We are talking about the different types of tissues. We have already introduced blood but now since again we here we are going to talk about blood in detail so we will start it from the scratch. Okay, so what is blood? Blood is nothing but the circulatory medium. Now, I don't really need to define it like a, a red colored fluid which is flowing throughout our body. That is something which we all know. So, it is basically the medium or the means of internal transport. It is a fluid connective tissue. Now, we all know why blood is a connective tissue. Connective tissue, the word itself says that it is that type of tissue which tries to connect different parts of the body. So some of the examples of connective tissues are uh, like ligaments, bones. So they are all examples of connective tissue because they tend to join different parts of the body. And that is how they join and form the skeleton of our body. So similarly, blood is also a connective tissue in the sense that it tries to connect different parts of the body. So if you see, blood flows throughout our body. So it, it is actually trying to connect all the parts together. So that is how blood is a fluid connective tissue. So if you talk about the composition of blood, it is almost 78% water. So most of it is water, right? And only 22% is solids. Now what do you have in this 22% of solids? Now this 22% of solids contain a lot of proteins, it also contains a lot of minerals, it contains again a lot of lipids as well as amino acids, glucose. So, so many different variety of solids are present in this 22%. So, if you see blood is like, it is almost like water and water with proteins, minerals, lipids, amino acids, glucose, all these things together becomes blood. Now you might wonder then why is it that the color of blood is red? Now the color of blood is basically due to the presence of a pigment called hemoglobin in the blood. So hemoglobin is red in color and hemoglobin gives imparts its red color to the blood and that is why it appears red. Now I am not going to discuss about the structure of hemoglobin. I already did that in our previous lesson. So anyways this was a rough idea about the composition of blood. Now, as I said, it connects different systems of the body by transporting gases, digested food, hormones and waste materials to different body parts. Like, it is something like this. For example, when we eat food, we eat it through our mouth, right? But it is not that only our mouth needs food. So then we chew the food, we swallow it, it gets digested in the stomach and the small intestine and if there in the small intestine, it gets absorbed. Now, the food is, has been absorbed by the small intestine. But it is not that only the small intestine cells need food for their survival. The entire, all the cells present in our body starting from our head to toe, all of them need the nutrients. So those nutrients need to be transported everywhere. Similarly, all the cells are undergoing various processes inside them. So all the cells will give out some waste materials as a result of those processes. So they want to dispose them off. So what do they do? So they also send all their waste materials to the blood and the blood carries them to the appropriate place so that they can be excreted out of the body. So that is how blood acts as an extremely strong uh, 
connective tissue which flows throughout our body and which, which connects different parts of the body together. So here in this picture you can actually see how blood connects different parts of the body. So here if you see it closely you will get to see that there are two different colors which you can see. One is the color, red color and the other one is the blue color. So the red color basically denotes the oxygenated blood. So red color denotes the oxygenated blood and the blue color denotes the deoxygenated blood. So oxygenated blood is the good blood that is the blood which is rich in oxygen because oxygen is something which is desired or which is needed by different cells of the body. And deoxygenated blood is the one which is rich in carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide is a byproduct of the process of cellular respiration which takes place in each and every cell of the body. So the cells want to get rid of carbon dioxide. So deoxygenated blood is the bad blood. So this picture actually tells you that how it gets, it connects different parts of the body starting from the head to the toe to your fingers, so everywhere you see that blood tries to connect them. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.